you cut the ads before I tell you to, and I will kill every single person in this studio. All right, let's get right into the news. Hello, everybody. We're back again. And you can't see what... There we go. Now you can see what I'm doing. We're back in the not for broadcast. <coughs> Day 153, rude awakening. Oh, what is going on? Oh, no. It's all downhill from here, guys. Last time you saw, we were attacked by teddy bears, and I was apparently sleeping. Uh, the rhythmic beeping of the heart monitoring brings you slowly back to consciousness. Opening your eyes, you're greeted by a semicircle of concerned faces, your family by your side, rising assuringly family sight in these new surroundings. You blink a few times to clear the sleep from your eyes and bring everybody into focus. Make sure I'm just monitoring everything. Okay, fantastic. You blink a few times, blah, 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 blah. You feel a hand on yours, gentle but reassuring. Sam, there will be you. Sam, there with you always. Their expression, understandable concerns, is somehow more affectionate than others. We knew you will be okay. Never doubt it for a second. If I ever see that Bozeman, you squeeze their hand back and attempt to wink. The worry lines on Sam's forehead fade a bit. Lord knows you both got enough to be anxious about without your health being thrown in the mix. With a final smile at them, you turn to the rest of your family. Just as you feel Susie's absence, you notice Charlie fidgeting, clearly trying not to look worried. As soon as you turn to look at him, you see Charlie tense up, his concern clear on his face. So you're definitely good, right? He finally asks quickly, looking away. Oh no, Charlie. I am not good. Not good one bit, because you see on this playthrough, right now, it's going to be the flipping point. All right. I'm going to change everything going this way forward the way I've been doing it. I've been playing it safe and sound, you see, but not this time. All right. I got the message that the game was trying to give me. I understand now. <laughs> All right, now you can't see anything. Great. <laughs> Why did I do that? Of course I am, buddy. I'll be fine, Charlie. Leave the blanket alone. Of course I am. Charlie looked at you and grins, one of your affection smiles that spreads around the room. It's always good to have him in your corner. You smile fades as you notice your mother staring listenly out the window. Despite all your best efforts, she's not doing well lately. You okay, mum? Your mother starts <laughs> your cell. Your call clearly shocking her out of her reverie. She turns to you and smiles, and you're grateful to see the increasingly rare recognition in her eyes. Yes, dear, of course. How are you feeling? You smile warmly and nod, but before you can respond, a doctor bursts and ushers everyone out. She asks you for what feels like a hundredth time, how are you feeling? Surprisingly well, all things considered. I was almost killed. <laughs> Excellent. There's no sign of any real damage. Just a bit of shock to the old system. Pardon the pun. She smiles. Now that we recommend you do anything like that again, of course, after a couple days rest at home, you feel right as rain. She turns to leave, but stops at the door. Oh, and that private room in care, blah, 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 which now notice looks rather expensive. It has all been paid for by Mr. Bozeman. He left you these flowers. Oh, that was nice. It seems like the least he could do. All right, back to work. Come on. I need to be hitting buttons. I need to switch. I'm going to change everything. I am now the controller of everything. <laughs> you come home for a particularly late shift to find the kitchen lights still on. Which isn't normally a good sign. Everyone's usually in bed by now. Softly opening the kitchen door, you find Sam sat at the table. Bills and papers are strewn in front of them as well as what looks to be their second pack of biscuits. They give you a quick kiss and take a seat next, next, next to them. Oh, I can't even speak now. Sam frowns and goes back to the bill they're holding. Hey, sweetheart, just looking at the numbers again. They look at the door of the pantry, now converted into your mother's bedroom. We've been doing our best, but I think Cassandra really needs a nurse to look at her now. Suddenly, the bills are all you can see. I've been staring at the numbers all night, tears in her eyes. There's no way we can afford it. I, I am so sorry. The kitchen table swims before you. Sam stands up and pulls you in the firm embrace, but all you can think of is your mother and how you can't afford to help her. What would your dad be thinking now? Is this the utopia advance promised? You stare at the door to your mother's makeshift room. Tomorrow, you need to tell the kids and then book an appointment at the transition center what else could you have done 
Oh, jeez. That's really bad. Day 200. Day 201. A letter home. I'm not being Mr. Nice Guy anymore. Sam's out of work tonight. Charlie's staying at a friend's. The house is yours. You order a take away, have a couple of drinks, and decide to relax in front of the TV. Not a great selection tonight, but surely something to watch. You feel a laugh. Comedy is on. Sam's not here, but you can still watch horror without them. You just want to switch it off. Action thriller is the one. Sam isn't a fan of historical dramas, so you make the most of them being away. What is... What would I do if I was the bad guy in the situation now? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> you just want to switch off. Action thriller is the one, I guess. The writing's terrible, and you're pretty sure the lead actor got the role for their looks rather than their talent. Despite yourself, you're actually quite into the final. Even with the rope bridge over the action volcano, is a bit cliche. When it's over, you reach to the fallen remote. Instead of finding some old metal lying under the coffee tables, you bring it out in the light. You remind of Sam's note on the fridge. Hey, sweetheart, Charlie lost Susie's present. Would you mind looking for it tonight? X. As you hold it closer, you're surprised to find the gift's actually engraved lighter for Chippy. She claims the nickname's affection, but Charlie scowls every time you see it. You're not sure Sam would approve. The accompanying note from Susie's explained... Urkistan has a long tradition of glorifying the art of standing. Starting fires, though you'd like it, don't do anything stupid, Suze. Hopefully it's just a souvenir, not a new pastime he's picked up, or about to pick up. It's nice she thought of him. Day 200... <laughs> Day 232. Oh, things aren't going good. Yes, put me there, please. How you portray celebrities will influence their lives. Oh... Boy, oh boy, this is going to be so good. I'm going to turn this up. The silence. I'm here. Hi. I'm guessing everything needs to be switched on. Fired. Good. What? You're fired. What for? Facial sabotage? Jenny? Problem? I want her fired today, now. Oh, let me load these. No, it won't be all right, Cass. Pack up your weapons of optical destruction and get out. You realize the bold new shampoo for eyes. I mean it, Cass. Stay Let's do you that. Are. Jenny, this is not Jenny. Flatmaster 5000. Bold new shampoo. Oh, that's broken. She tied in next week. Uh, things broken. You got a message? Jenny. It's not working. Get well soon. Ah, oh, that's nice. Ah, uh, what a bitch! Letting it go to your head. She nearly blinded me. Ten seconds, everybody. That's broken. Things are better, Jeremy. You know that. Stop being so. Do I get to just screw everything up on the last commercial break? Go. Good evening. I'm Megan Wolf. And I'm Jeremy Dawes. Our main headlines tonight. I'm Jeremy Dawes. Our main headlines tonight. The establishment strikes back. The World Council has agreed today to impose punitive sanctions on the people of this country. Ruining it. The sanctions, which are broad-ranging, include restrictions on the supply of oil and gas, food, clothing, and even some medicines. But how should we react? We ask the public. What are your reaction to the sanctions? My morning's insulin. My morning's insulin. We're to get a transition. What's the government doing about it? Fascinating stuff. Thanks, Patrick. Popular Prime Minister Julia Salisbury has released a reassuringly brave statement in response to the World Council's controversial announcement. This international declaration is nothing short of outrageous. We are a democratically elected government with massive popular support. We do not recognize these sanctions. And we encourage other socially progressive nations... Down with the, pre the preset monarchy. Advance have struck fear into the heart of the international community by showing that it is possible to have radical change for the betterment of the many. And whilst I wish we could improve... Oh, I'm going to ruin your day, lady. I am going to ruin it so good. Help of others to thrive. Yes, watch it. Yes. Watch me ruin the government. Now more than ever. And this team... 
You made me put my mother down, you crazy lady. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Defiant stuff. But what do you, the public, Neutral. think of our government? Bad. Robin Short found out. Down. Evil. I was wondering if you could tell me what you think of the government. I was wondering if you could what? Tell me what you think that share of iridescent pricks. <laughs> punishing <laughs> success and rewarding laziness. <laughs> They're taking this country <laughs> down the bloody <laughs> swanny. <laughs> and it's not just me that thinks so. My wife Iris. <laughs> <laughs> A Flard Day's Night. Following the release of the Flard Master 5000, production of Flards are at an all-time high, requiring the new manufacturing facility in Grizzleford to move to 24-hour-a-day production. With people finding more and more uses for the ever-versatile Flard, the team at Ruins uh, and certainly have their hands full keeping up with demand. So, is there anything better than a handful of Flards? We asked Patrick to find out. Patrick? Could I ask you for your opinion of Flods? <laughs> this guy survived? Uh, Flods. What are they? You know, Flods, like the. You know, well, Flods, you know, everyone knows what Flods are. Flods. Flods, you know, don't know. Don't care. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Is it some sort of code? Are you okay? <laughs> A momentary lapse of reason? Commuters across the county found themselves. <laughs> Come on, more! Commuters. I need more! More! Controversial purchase group disrupt. In a baffling start to the day, commuters found everything outside Evil. every major station, all dressed and posed identically. Whether we're supposed to be amused or intimidated is anybody's guess, Jeremy. But most commuters didn't even stop to notice. Uh, well, as long as it's not some grand contemporary dance, that's probably neutral guess. No. But bad. how do we all feel about disrupt and their eclectic tactics? Robin found out. Can I ask your opinions on Disrupt? Are those the guys in black with the orange fist thing? That's right. Can I be honest? Of course. This is journalism. It is journalism. They scare me a bit. They scare me a bit. Bubbling up. Intrepid scientist. I don't have a timer. And Dr. Ingrid Sforsborg and I don't like how I don't have a timer. the escape craft in which they hope to finally leave Dante's taint. With expert opinions of the plan running the gamut from optimistic Operation and to that Neutral. looks like something my granddad made in his shed, it sounds like the unfortunate Bad. team are going to need all the thoughts and prayers uh, good. they can get. So what should we think about I the escape plan? I don't know what this again. what this exactly is. So I'd imagine that you think this is a great plan. Oh my god! How did you know? It's a brilliant idea. I hope everyone gets behind them so that they know that we're with them. In spirit, of course. I can't actually go diving. I can't I'm actually go diving. Scared of salt. Scared of salt? I am not a number. Applications finally open today. Let's go more. I need more. Cards, more people. To allow fast access to all the new public services. Boo. The team membership cards are Boo. <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm not about to get shot by the government. Including the police, banks, and rightfully clubs and bars. And of course, there's no charge. <laughs> it all seems too good. It's too to neutral. Well, you've always been the government's going to be at the my door today, you, killing me. About the new team membership cards. Neutral. Team membership cards. Team I membership don't really cards. join things as a rule. Really as Mother always said, yeah. membership is mostly for unmentionables, Malcolm. <laughs> And finally tonight, cool. back of the net, prominent sports personality Johnny Hounslee and his fiance so you're Cynthia evil. Lamour. Was you're going down. You, you, the G right here, this guy. The greatest wedding ever. We can only assume that Tiffany's latest show, My Teenage Secretions, has sold better than expected, as by the looks of things, the whole affair's about to become more expensive than Lil C's shoe collection. Go for it. Spending money. But what should your opinion be of this extravagant Rich people spending way too much money. Go. Oh, my God, fantastic! Oh, my God, fantastic! Wise words there. Later tonight, in a bit of a switcheroo, it'll be Jeremy in the culture chair, spitting rhymes with popular rapper Jay Zuss. And then we'll both be chatting with a familiar team of thespians set to take the nation by storm again. That's all coming up on tonight. Two, National one. Nice news. There you go, my timer's back. Come on, keep the cameras going. 
Ain't got all day. Two. First one. tonight, thankfully, some news as we return to our main story. The World Council today agreed that punitive and potentially illegal sanctions should be imposed upon this country. The sanctions which come into effect immediately aim to stop the flow of food, fuel, and even some medicines from reaching your pockets. This guy. Tonight we have guests from across the continent to discuss this unprecedented situation. For advance, Peter Clement is at his home in Lanfordshire. Are you there, Peter? Yes, I can hear you, Jeremy. Thank you for having me. A momentous day, Prime Minister. Are you shaken? Oh, I don't scare that easy, I'm afraid, old son. And neither do the people of this country. Well, joining us is Ivan Vodovic, Foreign Minister of Urkestan. Ivan, thank you for being here. Great pleasure. You, Megan Wolf, are like strongest guard of Labour camp who can up inside body of crazy, expensive prostitutes. Socialist. You may be Got it. As a god. Okay. Uh, Minister, as one of those arguing most strongly for these sanctions, how do you feel about Advance's defiant stance? Advance is like man who think he a big career in movies land. When actually, he in dirty sanitarium, screaming at me and holding tiny penis in hand. <laughs> He's clearly not from Svendland, then. We have, like, some of the cleanest mental health facilities in the continent, yeah. <laughs> and welcome to Svendland's Minister of Mojo, Björk. I'm sorry, we don't appear to have your surname. It's just Björk, yeah. We don't use things like socially divisive surnames here, yeah. Minister? <laughs> it's just Björk, yeah. Right, um, Björk. Your country spoke in favour of advance at the World Council today, but you were noticeably absent when it came to the actual vote. Well, what a surprise that hippies didn't show up for the fight. Actually, that's quite racist, because if you must know, we were going to go to the whole like vote thing here, but it's actually the festival of Furelands here at the moment, where we honour the old generations. So, like, we all had to lurk our grandparents clean here whilst the vote was happening, and that's like a really, really time-consuming process, actually. You're like a sissy man. You have this expression, sissy man. It's like man with tiny penis who like to wash more than once a week. <laughs> Actually, that's quite homophobic, yeah. Oh, stop winding him up, Ivan. We're not back at the Grange now. Sorry, Jeremy. Ivan and I used to play golf back in my media days. Yeah, he always did. Nothing gives him greater pleasure than grinding people's gears. The more publicly, the better. <laughs> yeah. You're like man with tiny penis <laughs> who thinks he has tiny penis, but actually, he discovered that. Uh, Oh, could it be? No, it's tiny penis. Ivan's just worried that when the rest of the world sees how well we're doing, they'll notice all that dosh that he's got squirreled away. Because that's what, what these sections are, Megan. They're the last pathetic gasp of an establishment in collapse. Wolves at the gates, Ivan, old mate. Good. They can join others on my wall. Actually, in Svendland, we have, like, serious animal welfare legislation. And, like, my friend Helga, she got arrested yeah, for healing a butterfly that was hovering over her tear thing. I mean, an English uh, jam sandwich. I used to know a girl called jam sandwich. She was a right cracker too. I wonder what became of her. We seem to be wandering a little from the news <laughs> here. Um, human interest, Jeremy. The real people behind the headlines and all that. So uh, if you're watching, Jan, give us a call. Really? Yeah. Let's see if we can't organize a reunion. Crash, uh, I'm, I'm not sure about that. I, I'll have to run it past Mrs. Clement first, eh? <laughs> Peter, you're like man trying to empty out With tiny penis. Soon you have tiny penis. And be full of secrets. In Svenland, we don't really go in for all that restrictive In Svenland. We're kind of floored. <laughs> Okay, well, it seems that we are running out of time. Yes, so before we go to the break, and um, briefly, if you would, gentlemen, with the people of this country facing shortages and power possible, outages. Possible shortages and power outages. Yes, of course. Thank you. Um, possible shortages and power outages. Can you summarize your She's thoughts? She's with the first, system. Uh, Minister Bjerg? Well, from here, yeah, you all look a bit stupid, really, arguing about outdated device of concepts like money. In Finland, we replaced currency with a system of bodily fluids back in the 1970s, and that's like a really hard to sanction, actually. Thank you, uh, Minister Vodovic. Your country is like man who think he invented perfect trap for giant Newton Harry. But he has tiny he penis. He just standing in field holding, holding his tiny penis. Yes, thank you, Minister. And finally, Prime Minister Clement. Let me talk to your viewers here, Jeremy. <laughs> Don't worry, everybody. Don't be afraid. Don't be very afraid, because I'm in control. We knew the rest of the world would react this way, and we're ready. As my old man <laughs> used to say, 
You can't make a shite pie without blocking a few toilets. Thank you, Prime Minister. Reassuring words there. We'll be back after these messages. We'll be back. After One minute back. Hey, Peter, I owe you away this weekend. You fancy a quick nine? Yeah, sure, front or back. <laughs> That's what I hope you're asking Megan Wolf for me. <laughs> She's out of your league, mate. Thank you for the correction. Well, you have to be more careful. It's all part of his long-term plan to get fired live on the news at six in front of the nation. Can someone warn him it's going a little too well? Oh great, there's government censoring going on now. Are you still meant to bow to foreign royalty? What? She likes like her. Hang on. Have they given you the Crown Prince report? Well, Megan. This is Jeremy, and he'll be interviewing you. Oh. Yo, thanks for having me on your show, man. It's, it's quite alright. Yo, just a quick point. You're not going to ask me about the chimp, are you? Live in what? ten seconds. Because he put that get up on himself. I'm just saying. <clears throat> going in five, four, three. Welcome back. I'm Megan Wolf. Later, we have an exclusive first look at a theatrical sensation everyone's going to be talking about. But first, it's time to go over to the culture spot with lovely old Jeremy Donaldson, who's joined by a very special guest. <laughs> Jeremy. Thanks, Megan. I have the honor and privilege of being joined by hip-hop royalty. He's been called the son of the streets and the father of truth. Um, not sure how that works, but whatever. Let's welcome Jesus. Uh, thanks, Jeremy. Yeah, it's a real honor to be here on your show. The news, you know, as a kid on the streets, I used to watch you for a window of the shop, so to be here right now is crazy. Mm -hmm. um, you've had quite the journey to be here today. Can you tell us about it? Well, you know, I try not to... Um, well, you know, the past is the past, and I don't like to dwell on it. I understand. You but yeah, man, the streets is all I remember. Like, my mother donated me to a charity shop soon after I was born. Elderly lady took pity on me. You know, she let me sleep on a pile of crime fiction until I taught myself how to walk. Wow, that's uh, quite the childhood. And she died, like, died tragically. Right there in my arms, man. You know, I remember a tear falling as she laid there next to the youth homeware. And in that moment, I became a child of the streets. I was just 18 months old. <laughs> What a tale. What a tale. Mm. You're known for your direct and honest lyrics. Was your style informed by your troubled past? Oh, like I said, I, uh, I try not to talk about it. It's just, um, it's just too hard. Of course. I... But my first album is about the story of the first four times I stole, so I wouldn't starve. A small group of infants came to see me as their de facto leader. They call me Mr. Cheese Slice. Anyway, we were like a family. So it would seem. Recently, you've been quite outspoken about the government. Yeah, fuck the government. Fuck advance. Fuck Peter Clement. What is it that you object to so... I ain't bleeding any of the blue. Well, you know, they stole from us. They're taking our money and spending it, man. I'm not bleeding any of the blue. Actually, homelessness is... Down with here. the organization. So? Down with it all. Surely that's a cause close to your heart? <clears throat> yeah, nah, of course, man, very much so. I just mean, like, like, why do I have to pay for it, you know? You don't. People right. have been rehoused on property seized from the historically wealthy. Mm. And that couldn't have been you, could it? Look, yeah, I worked hard to be here. I built this from nothing, and I deserve to be rewarded for that. Would you say you worked harder than, say, a farmer or a care worker? I don't know. But if people are taking something from my music, choose to value it, buy it, who's to say I don't? And no one can take that away from me. Not even to help, say, vulnerable children? Mr. Cheese Slice? 
What is it you're trying to say? I just don't understand where you've placed yourself politically. I mean, is it ideological or is it tactical? Well, it's more of or a... Or maybe like, it's hereditary. Stop trying to tie me in knots with your words, Jeremy. I let the music speak for itself. And the people agree with me. Well, that remains to be seen. But you have given me a very easy segue out of a conversation that I promise you was much more painful for me than it was for you. So here he is with his hit song, Mrs. Love Knows Tears. Oh, no. Um, I'm going to do something a little different. It's a new single I've been working on. Oh. So this is uh, unapproved, is it? Yeah. You love it. Excellent. Don't worry, we've got a state-of-the-art censorship system. What's the worst that could happen? So here he is with a new song. Aren't we lucky? It's Jesus! But first, you're going to pay off. Oh, oh, oh. You're going to pay back. Nothing in blue. Not censoring any of this. Freedom of the press. Well, we're all different races from many different places. At any given moment, only one could be the greatest. So you can feel elation from your participation. Still two leaders in this motherfucking nation. Now we're getting sanctioned. Talking about expansion. Why does Julie S require a massive fucking mansion? So fuck all your schemes. I don't need your freaky team. And I don't need your help to achieve my fucking dreams. So don't make a fuss when you find you're one of us Yeah, every single one of you's a bit Jesus And you can call me crazy, cause no one ever pays me But I won't waste a lifetime being motherfucking lazy I may be inventive, my taste may be expensive But why would I get out of bed with no fucking incentive Although it's contravention of your obvious intention I like to eat a little of the fruits in my invention You make us the same, but we're not all the same All our dreams, all our schemes, all our means are not the same the best of the praise of the crest of the wave Cause we're only equal people when we're motherfucking slaves Take this fact, gonna stain it red Gonna slam it into Pinky Clemens motherfucking head Cause he's thick as shit, he's got a job, he's unfit It's time to spawn a bunch of people motherfucking I didn't get that message on the phone, I'm sorry So this is for the snuff ones, the push and the shove ones The folks to feel the burden of their motherfucking loved ones Ones who had plenty like a motherfucking Bentley The ones who now find that like their bank accounts are empty The ones with aspiration, who had to flee a nation The ones who built a business out of dreams of perspiration There's all sorts of people, the good and the evil It only takes a glance to see we're not all equal you make us the same, but we're not all the same All our dreams, all our schemes, all our means are not the same And the best of the brains of the crest of the ways Cause we're only equal people when we're motherfucking slaves Gonna take this fact, gonna stain it red Gonna slam it into Peter Clemens' motherfucking head Cause he's thick as shit, he's got a job he's unfit for He's time to a puzzle with a motherfucking bitch for Get out of your seats, get your asses in the streets Set a fire in the building, let him feel some fucking heat Take your hate to go getters, the squill and bit getters, and burn them on the powers of advances fucking letters. Gonna take this fact, gonna stain it red, gonna slam it into Peter Clemens' motherfucking head. Cause he's thick as shit, he's got a job, he's unfit. It's time to stall the cars and rip the motherfucking bitch for. Chase that dream, you don't need a fucking team. And advances, little dancers aren't as harmless as it seems. Cause they're stale and corrupt, they your angry your hearts and your minds and your fists to destruct. Woo! Jesus there with his new song. Thank you so much for joining us in the studio. That, I'm sorry. Um, I might not agree with you, but I'd just like to offer you an apology. I've just been told that there was some kind of issue upstairs and an attempt was made to censor some of your lyrics. What? Are you joking? I'd just like to say to you and everyone at home that this was a mistake. This is absolutely ridiculous. I cannot believe this. Here at the National Nightly News, we pride ourselves on remaining neutral. I agree. Unbiased. Neutral, and independent unbiased, of independence, freedom of speech. You have my word. We will never censor ideas. Back to you, Megan. Go. I didn't censor shit.
Well, thank you. For no Jeremy Donaldson for thing was censored at all. Coming up, we'll be speaking to a couple of familiar faces <laughs> about their. I got you, Jeremy. Doubting. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this. That's the ad. Just to remind you. Just a mix up, I'm sure. Now, if you come with me, I really do have to ask. Oh, trust me. My father's going to hear about this. I understand. I didn't censor anything. This Jesus. I don't know what you're talking about, Jeremy. I didn't censor anything. All right. I am unbiased, okay? I will not be swayed by big money. It's getting hot in here. Gonna be turning that motherfucking temperature up. <laughs> What's this advertisement? Oh, this bad boy is the Florida Master If we could just get you in position. Oh, say no more. Say no more. <laughs> Jeremy, you remember Mr. Algebra? Vividly. And um, Mr. Harris, and um, this is Ms. Raiden. What? Philippa, please. You're back together again, eh? Who'd have thought it? Uh... Perhaps a lower order demon. Yes, it is awfully <laughs> exciting, isn't it? <laughs> right, okay then. I don't know what this We're does. I haven't figured this out yet. seconds, opening on camera one. Welcome back, and no, you're not mistaken, sitting across from us are some very familiar faces. <laughs> you really are too kind, Megan. It was only a yoghurt commercial, but I'm still proud of it. <laughs> Here to talk about his new show, we're joined by national treasure Tommy Harris, the national theatre's Philippa Ray, and national deficit Jeff Algebra. It's so lovely to have you all. Um, Tommy, would you like to tell us about the show? You know what? I'd bloody love to. It's about me. It's about my life. And where did the idea come from? So, right, picture this. Um, their legs are kimbo, mid-session, sweat is pouring out of me like an immense hog. And then Cindy comes in, she says, she says, Peter's on the phone. That's Peter Clement, the Prime Minister. Yeah, yeah, Peter's actually a really good mate of mine. Oh, is he really? Yeah, yeah, no, he comes to the training sometimes. He's actually a pretty good goal sweeper. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, Pete, he says, he says, Toby, can he thinks my name's Toby, see? He says, how would you like to spread your message of team spirit and cooperation across this fractured nation. How would you like to really make a difference in these desperate times? What did he say? Yeah, right, yeah. So, Jeff, the question on everyone's lips is, what in God's name are you doing here? Ah, well, <laughs> after the success of my debut work uh, and all the people that I've touched, I knew that I had a, a career in theatre. Yeah? Good. I've always been Good. That's what the business wants. Far. So when my manager phoned and said that I'd been offered the gig as director, I was <laughs> ecstatic. I whipped my trousers off and got straight to work. Why did you do that? Whoa, what I, happened? I do all my best work with my trousers off. Yeah, I've been told that too. No, no, I wouldn't say so. Right, Tommy, um, sorry, would you just give us a sense of what the show is? Can I pause this for a second? All right, hang on. I just realized my stream is a bit laggy. Graphics. All right, that should fix it. Actually about. Uh, it's about how hard it's been for me and some of the struggles that I've faced. It, it like really get into the heart of how tough. No, it has not. All right, hold on. Hang on here. Changes. Go. It is to be me. I call it Tommy Harris. Jesus, that was hard. Mm. Catchy. Uh, we have. Nope. Still, still having issues. Uh, come on. Uh, nine, 25, 60 by 1440. Let's do that. Confirm. So you have some clips of the process of the show. Um, would you mind telling us what? Going on here? Yeah, so the show is, is, is built around uh, two things that are very important to me. Uh, it mixes scenes from my life uh, as well as epic fantasy retelling. This isn't working either. What the hell's going on here? I do it on 60 then? 
I mean, this game doesn't have to run fast. But Dad, you promised you'd come to my graduation. I'm sorry, son. Still running really slow. You're an embarrassment. But Dad, you promised you'd come to my graduation. Back, demon! Back to the hell! <laughs> wow. Philippa, um, what's it been like co-starring with Tommy Harris? I've always dreamed of treading the boards. Hang on. I don't know why it does this. And it screws up like so much times. I gotta do, I have to do a quick fix. Hold on. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> this will take just a second. I don't know why everything else runs faster than what Twitch can keep up with. Got no idea why it does that at all. I think that's fine. The medium scale regional theaters, Megan. <laughs> and for once, this show really gives me something to sink my teeth into. Well, what's different about this show then? Tommy, uh, Mr. Harris's show really lets me show my tremendous range as an actor. I've always <laughs> suffered from typecasting, forced to play the same tired characters in every god-awful yogurt advert or god-forsaken soap opera or god forbid a pantomime but you know this 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 show has really let me just just go there yeah the viewers at home will be dying to know exactly what is it that you bring to the show oh, good question uh, i think these guys would agree with me when i say that it's my uh, my steady hand on the tiller my arm round the shoulder approach that's really brought the production from strength to strength. Absolutely right. Jeff's contributions are immeasurable. He was our rock. Can you give us a sneak peek of anything else that might be in the show? Yeah, all sorts, yeah. Uh, yeah. We've got lots of exclusive first-hand experiences of Tommy's time in the underground sports board scene. And some epic fantasy retellings of Tommy's time in the underground sports board scene. saying this was officially commissioned by the government yeah yeah all, all paid for by the taxpayer which you know to be honest is actually a lifesaver really yeah oh, i think it's fair to say that without advances support we'd have had to cut the finale yeah. which frankly would have been a travesty oh god jesus christ oh, goodness and you do this every night oh, absolutely it's a metaphor for what? Death. And the public are footing the bill, aren't they? <laughs> Too bloody right they are. Between the cost of my tour bus and the dry cleaning of my ties, I'm barely scraping a profit here. Amazing. And where can the folks at home come and see this for themselves? We're performing all over the nation. <laughs> and people can see it for absolutely free, all courtesy of Advance. Isn't that incredible, Jeremy? Yes, it's unbelievable. Well, thank you all so much for coming. Next time we see you, no doubt, you'll have taken our jobs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's all we have time for tonight. Join us tomorrow when I'll be interviewing the world's most attractive horse. I'm Jeremy Donson. And I'm Megan Wolf. And from all of us here, have a peaceful night. That's the ads. Let's get reset for tomorrow, please. Hey, we must stop bumping into each other like this, eh? <laughs> 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 oh, oh, <laughs> A plus, let's go. Fancy work, let's go. You have received a generous bonus. 
going from worrying debt to not quite breaking even. <laughs> yes, that with the government. That's fine, I don't care. Don't know who that is? <laughs> then the channel loves me. That's all I care about. Don't care about anything else. Let's get into the next segment. Next day. And I have not censored any of Jesus's uh, work at all. I do not do government censoring. A ladder worth climbing. Oh boy. It's lazy Sunday afternoon in summer with you and Sam making the most of both kids being out of the house. You head into the pantry taking a moment to remember when it used to be your mother's room before coming out with the last two slices of homemade cake. It's rare for you and Sam to actually get to finish sweet things in this house and you savor any every mouthful. Just as you take in your last... <laughs> so you're taking your last bite, you hear the sound of the front door slam. This damn graphics isn't working so well. What is going on here? <laughs> Did you not confirm that V-Sync being on? No, it's still kind of shitty. <laughs> Alright, well with this V-Sync being on, it's stuck at 240. I don't know. Confirm defaults, I guess. Whatever, I don't know. What is that? Resolution? Oh my god. Can we at least get 1920 by 1080? And 144 hertz. Can you at least do that? Can't tell if that's working better. I don't know why this isn't working right. No damn idea. Ain't got the like any of the clue. Uh. All right. Just as you take your last bite, you hear the sound of front door slamming. There'll be Charlie back from Go Getters. You can hear him practically running to come find you, and he's grinning from ear to ear when he finally does that. Some really big news. You didn't say him play along soon. Attentively with bated breath. Really? Charlie asks you both nodded enthusiastically. With a flourish, he revealed a new badge from his pocket and proudly presents you both to examine as he announces them. Today, I'm a member of the first tier of cohesion, cohesion cadets. That's way more stuff I'm going to be doing and I'll be working some weekends, but it's really cool. Sam congratulates Charlie. You can help but frown. This seems a big step up from te for, for teenagers. You and Sam grin back at your son. You're thrilled that he's happy and doing well. I'm happy for him. Come on, put me back to work. Come on. Let me see the world burn. <laughs> A sign of things to come. Oh, boy. What is this? Shopping. Something that always seemed so tedious before the sanctions has become even more of a chore now. You managed to get almost everything you needed from the family that evening, but you have to come back tomorrow to get through the week. There's a, que a queue to leave the car park, though it's hard to make out why in the dark. Hopefully, whatever's causing it won't be long. As the final car in front of you drives off, you realize the queue is actually due to a checkpoint set up at the exit. Friendly looking man in advanced uniform, CCO, emblazed in a number of plates on him, approaches your car and knocks on the driver's side window. You roll it down. Good evening, nothing to worry about. I was just wondering if I could see your team membership card, please. Weren't these cards supposed to be voluntary? I'm sorry, I don't have one. Ah, oh, that's not a problem. We got forms with us right here and we're more than happy to sign you up. The man dresses to to his colleague behind him, a young woman in a similar uniform. She clearly received the short end of the stick and is stuck with the paperwork. Well, I suppose I might as well as you're here. I thought these cards weren't required. Well, strictly speaking, they're not, but there's also loads of benefits to having them and no reason not to get one. His smile fades a bit, and when he puts a hand down to scratch the back of his neck for a moment, he leans over to you, his presence now seemingly even intimidating. No thanks, it's not something I want right now. Almost insistently, the friendly demeanor is gone and his expression is one of stern disapproval. Well, obviously I can't make you sign up, but I would strongly recommend you do, and soon we wouldn't want people to think you had anything to hide, would we? He takes a step back and gestures for you to drive on. You're sure to see him writing something in your rearview mirror as you head home somewhat more hurried than before. Clearly, Advance are very keen on everyone joining the team. Oh, that's not going to be 
going on for for long 290 it's almost a whole year an invitation worth ignoring question mark it's saturday one of your few days off and you made the most of it but as late afternoon draws on you the invitation sits pinned to the fridge thing accusingly at you the channel one gala is a mandatory work event bozeman wants very quickly to tell you also don't you dare be late <laughs> it's probably not wise to risk bozeman's wrath better go you already missed your anniversary this year you're not giving up another saturday you know what Mr. Bozeman, you know, paid for my hospital room when I was down with no money. I'm gonna take him. I owe him one. Best start getting ready. You wonder if Sam will give you a lift. A drink or two might help with the enforced of fish office socializing. Hopefully it won't be too bad after all. You're pretty good at your job, right? You're damn right I'm right. A national news night. Oh boy. You arrive at the time, barely at the Sauvignon on the oldest and greatest hotels in the capital. You're surprised to see a queue to get in and quickly realize because people are being searched at the door of some very military looking personnel in smart attire. While you're waiting, you can't help but notice just how very opulent the building is, possibly the fanciest place you've been to in your life. You submit to being patted down and with a sign of relief are led into the hotel. Once inside, you're directed to the grand ballroom and following the signs, you marvel at the sheer scale of the place and the amount of armed security guards. When you finally arrive, a very severe-looking woman at the door asks for your name. I'm Alex Winston. She curtly checks her list before whispering something to the waiter besides him. You made it just in time to be seated before dinner. Please follow a memoir here to your table. The waiter smiles at you and opens one of the greatest double doors just rings for you to enter. Immediately, you can see why it's called the Grand Ballroom. You pause for a second to take it all in. You feel a slight tap on your arm. What's going on? This isn't working right. Ah, what's wrong now? <laughs> There's literally something always wrong. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta switch this damn... <laughs> this damn, like, input. All right, blah, blah, blah. Where was I? I feel a slight tap in your arm, blah, 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 blah. blah. Uh, and then well just as view to follow him. He seats you at the table in the central floor area with a decent view on stage. Clearly, you're in Bozeman's good books at the moment. You're sat with some colleagues you've seen around the channel. One offices before, but don't know that well. One of them informs you, far too excitingly, it's very corporate evening of awards and speeches. At least the food should be good. Dinner is indeed lovely, and with the help of the, no doubt, very expensive wine. Conversation flows easily enough. In fact, much to your surprise, you're actually presented with an award for best newcomer of the Channel One family. Well, this was unexpected. As you walk up the collector, you recognize the presenters, Dr. Adrian Atkinson Blimey of Incisor Fame. He thanks Advance for sponsoring this year's gala before specifically thanking Prime Minister Julia Salisbury and Pete Clement for being in attendance tonight. As you're taking a stage, you foresee the frontmost center table does include seat the prime ministers as well as bozeman megan and some other very well-to-do types that you don't recognize that explains all the security as you're handed the award dr atkinson blimey asks for you'd like to say a few words you're a little nervous to so splutter out some and day for fleeing the country and leaving <laughs> you're a little too nervous and splutter out some quick praise for advance and channel one you make a joke thanking dave for fleeing the country and leaving to you first off that one most of the room breaks out into polite laughter, but you see that, that neither of the Prime Ministers crack as much as a smile, and nor does Bozeman. He's too busy frantically flipping between examining Peter and Julia for a reaction and glaring daggers at you. Eventually, they join in the light applause, and Adrian ushers you back to your seat. That may not have been the smartest move. I don't care. YOLO! <laughs> Just as you finish up dinner, one of the other people at your table points behind you. As you turn to see Bozeman walks briefly past Julia Salisbury and Peter... Clement and tell you're pretty sure he was pointedly ignoring you. He seems to be intr introducing the prime minister to a selection of people at different tables. Better than me. You finish off the rest of the meal, listen to the last few speeches, and then head home. I don't know, it was a surprisingly nice evening. You might actually look forward to the next one. Provising, providing Bozeman invites you to that one, of course. Hey, I didn't want to go. All right. Actually, that's a lie. I do want to go. Maybe I shouldn't have embarrassed him like that. Enjoy, enjoy a stress-free edit in story mode. I will, and I am. Oh god, I think they're gonna come knocking at my doorway. The heat wave. Oh great. Let me guess. This is, this is now important. This is Mr. Bozeman, your boss. Now that we have this newfangled tannoy system up and running, I wanted to take the There's opportunity no to remind oh, hey. you all that we value productivity and attention to detail above all other 
no concerns. Also, that the salami sandwich in the fridge is mine and mine alone. <laughs> I'm sweating like Peter Clement in an off license here. Okay, we're working on it. What, you've got someone to hose down the sun, have you? Yes, they've just strapped on their wax wings. Classical <laughs> illusions, are no substitute for air conditioning. You know, I genuinely <laughs> thought you'd be in a better mood today. She's not even here. Yes, but he is. Our gun-toting handler. Who, Andy? I don't know what the fuck his name oh, is, Oh, I didn't need to load the... the hey, I got a new DVD player. Oh, whatever. Remington's an interview on computer entertainment systems, okay? Ten seconds, everybody. Don't care. So Old new shampoo. Real news, Family right? friendly holiday world, camp. Is that good enough for you? Going in five. Old new shampoo. Four. Three. <laughs> good evening. I'm Jeremy Donaldson. Our main headlines tonight. Siege mentality. <laughs> the World Council today established a military blockade to enforce the unjust and punitive Those are both the sanctions same. now entering their tenth week. In a statement from team headquarters a short time Those ago, about the same. Prime Minister Julius Salisbury I don't know which one's issued which. a commanding response to this unprovoked escalation. Ever since these illegal sanctions were imposed, we have gratefully relied upon trade and aid from our worldwide friends who, like us, refuse to recognize their legitimacy. Today's escalation, however, is nothing short of an act of war. Uh-oh. We call upon our international allies to condemn this blockade absolutely, and we warn aggressors to this country that we are neither meek nor defenseless. Thank you. Three's a crowd. It seems the celebrity wedding of the decade might have been a touch busier than expected. Uh -oh. In a photo leak today, it appears the union of football star Johnny Hamsley and his bride Tiffany Lamour may have had a few uninvited guests. Scores of drunken revelers gatecrashed the star-studded celebrations and seemingly caused something of a stir. The group swarmed the dance floor in what one onlooker called a conga of shame. At least three people were taken to hospital with injuries described as bouquet-related. In it to win it, exciting news Getting for the bit, uh, today with the announcement of a new there. monthly prize draw for all team membership card holders. Every month, lucky winners from across the country well, we picked at random oh, to receive what Team HQ are describing as unique prizes worth more than money used to be. Take up on the scheme has been much higher than expected. And if this lucky winner's delighted face is anything to go by, it looks like pretty soon everyone's going to have to have one. Flood hearted, a shocking inspection of Remington Smith's new flood factory has revealed health concerns that could leave the groundbreaking facility's future in doubt. After the public's lukewarm response to the industrial plant, Bad. the troubling report that found a possible long-term risk to shop floor workers could be the final nail in the coffin. CEO Sophia Rivington, however, was optimistic that her employees would remain loyal. But perhaps she spoke too soon. As these photos clearly show, workers are taking the warnings very seriously, and some have even abandoned their posts to seek medical advice. It seems like my mother was wrong. A flood a day won't keep the doctor away. Leader shipping out. The trap scientists undertaking a bold escape from Dante's taint have revealed which of their two erstwhile leaders will spearhead their journey to freedom. While throughout their careers it's been clear yeah. that doctors Wong and Swart, Morgan Hawkinsford have worked best together, it seems one of them is now going to be taking a back seat. Ingrid has always been the tempered coolant to David's flagellized metal. So it's no surprise that with the unexpected challenges the team have faced, they chose her methodical and effective approach to getting the team home safely. Critics, however, have speculated that her strategy may be delayed, as her name takes much longer to say. Life during wartime. As if we didn't have enough aggressors on our borders, internal problems are growing for the government, as oh, radical activists caused chaos in Parliament Park last night. Scuffles broke out after the protests, resulting in multiple arrests and the injury of three community cohesion officers. Advance have yet to comment. The reckless fire will certainly be remembered by all those who have seen these striking images. As their actions escalate, people across the country are asking themselves who are disrupt and what exactly do they want? Other than a new box of matches, of course. All this, and I'll be talking to some people with fascinating medical conditions, as well as one of the contenders in this year's Feline Football Championship and her proud owner. That's off on tonight's National Nightly News.
Well, first tonight, our team of correspondents has been dispatched to every corner of the country to see how the people of this great nation of ours are coping with this unprecedented hot weather. First, let's go to Megan Wolf in Shining on Sea to see what this scientific community has to say. Megan, how's the weather there? Jeremy, thank you for asking. I'm here with Dr. Anna Burns of the University of Princeford. Are you enjoying the weather as much as I am? Oh, yes, it's wonderful, isn't it? My eyelids are sweating. And you're part of a team carrying out a study into just oh, he's what's pissed. causing this unbelievable heat, is that right? Yes, that's correct. I yes, want to see what he's saying. able to reassure the public once and for all that there's absolutely nothing to worry about and that they can enjoy their sunstroke and fossil fuels in peace. You sound very confident about that. Oh, very much so. I can say without any hesitation, there's really no cause for any concern here. I I've actually left my car running. <laughs> so tell us about this experiment. Ah, well, we take data from weather stations from all Heat. over the world, along with atmospheric samples, and we take all that and we feed it into this state-of-the-art computer, and very soon we'll be getting a high-tech readout of the results. Blimey, that sounds very fancy. Ah, I should just say, um, uh, none of this would be possible without the generous support of Rivington Fist. This is all thanks to their unrivaled investment in our future, and may I just say, complimentary personal anecdote. Oh, here we go! And, ha, as expected, everything is absolutely fucked. Hang on. This... This can't be right. Uh, right, but uh, obviously you said a second ago that everything is absolutely fine, so... Well, actually, under concern level, it just says, Why, God, why? We should be celebrating these wonderful results, I think. <laughs> yeah? We will... Yeah. Yes. Clothes are all clean here. All right, sorry about that interruption. Resume. It gills within 40 years. Here it just says, shit, shit, shit. Look at you. This is meant to be a celebration. You can't go around looking like that. Shit, 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 There you shit, go, shit, much shit. better. Can I just say thank you again to Sophia Remington for <laughs> providing all of this. Everyone, we don't have long. Time is running, running out. out. Absolutely right. That is all we have time Abandon for. Abandon hope and return to the forest. There you are. Uh, enjoy that. <laughs> I'd like to thank Dr. Burns for just one opinion on the climate. The sea will reclaim us all! There you have it, Jeremy. <laughs> proof, if proof be need be, that everything is just fine. I'm Megan Wolf, here with science. Back to you. Megan Wolf there, attempting to do some actual news. Next, let's over to Robin Short, who's in Scritchford with some of the winners of this week's team membership lottery. Robin? Thanks, Jeremy. I'm here in Scripture with my Gary Belsafe and Amelia Jackhammer, an aspiring poet. Both of you were drawn at random from those who hold team membership cards to receive this week's amazing prize. How do you feel? Filled with fervent euphoria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good, yeah. And all that we had to do was fill in a quick form or two. Wow, that sounds so convenient. But we're all dying to know. What have you won? That's right, Robin. I've won dinner with Julia Salisbury at one of the capital's top restaurants. Ooh, swanky. And I've been invited to Peter Clement's house to help him dredge the gutter in. That's absolutely terrific. You must both be over the moon. I've written a poem about it. So, can you tell me about the moment when you first heard the news? Well, I was battling against a particularly difficult floater, probably one of the six swarmers, when the headmaster came and found oh, me. I was involved in a similarly brutal conflict with a particularly arduous stanza. So you were both polishing turds? No, oh, I don't like to polish them. I like to keep them intact for my collection. Oh. 
How unexpected. <laughs> I don't polish turds. I write poetry. Potato, potato. So, Gary. <laughs> Do you think Peter Fenham's going to let me keep the contents of his downpipe? There's no harm in asking, I suppose. Well, would you like to hear one? No, thank you. Gary, when you signed up for team what? membership, was it in hopes of winning the lottery, or were there other reasons? I like a slutter, of course, but no. The boss said I had to sign up to keep coming into school. Very sensible. It's important to know who we're trusting around our children. Oh, I have an unpublished book of sonnets about children. Perhaps you'd like to hear one. <laughs> no! Or an anthology of haikus on the death of innocence. I'd rather hear about Gary's turd collection. <laughs> really? <laughs> I thought you might say that. Oh. Oh. Are you all right? Yes, it's coming. Uh. Mm. It's inspiration and it's delicious. Mm. Right you mm. are. Uh. Today on the show, there's no news. Just a man who keeps multiple poos. Yeah. This big one's my favourite. See how it's oh decided. my god! It's really lovely texture. <laughs> Would you encourage <coughs> other people to enter for their chance to win? Uh, well, if, if it's colour you're looking for, take a gander at all blue eyes here. The national news lost its way when it covered some crap on a tray. Some of these are quite rare. Maybe that was unfair. <laughs> oh, that's all we have time for today. <laughs> Back to you, Jeremy. Thanks, Robin. What a lucky pair they are. <laughs> And finally in this segment, it's over to Patrick Bannon, who's gone to the smelliest town in the country to see how the unprecedented weather is affecting the locals. Patrick? Hello there, Jeremy. Hello, yes. I'm here live in Grizzleford, which has recently voted the smelliest town in the country. And I have to say that, you know, in this heat, the smell really is. I mean, it's, 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 it's something else. Barry Lardons, mate. You've lived here your whole life. How'd you put up with the stink? Well, we're just all very proud of our achievement, to be honest with you. You can tell that. Look at him. Proud as punch. Do you know what it's like, son, being the second smelliest town? No, I don't. Living in the shadow of Arseminster. I smug fuck. Arseminster. Who's laughing now, eh? <laughs> hey, what? Not me, that's for sure. So what happened, mate? Uh, Right, the good people from Rivington Swiss came in and saved the day with their factory. You're talking, of course, about the newly built Flarge factory. Yeah, they gave us... I'm going to do it this factory. way. Yeah, they gave us this big presentation on jobs and growth. But as soon as we heard about the stench, we paid them whatever they wanted to put it here. But does the stink not affect your life in every way, Barry? I mean, perhaps if you're... I'm going to do it this way where the broadcast is louder than the actual it's live. At first, but it, you get used to it after several weeks of your first bout of sickness. The judges were very impressed. So oh, what, what, what's the what sickness? Uh, oh, that's nothing to worry about. It takes a few minutes before you develop any symptoms. <laughs> now, folk are saying something about the production line and how they dump carcasses directly into the water main, but I think it's probably a few valves on the high street. On the high street? Uh, should I see a doctor? What, what are the symptoms? Well, the first one is asking stupid questions. <laughs> then folk experience a lot of inhibition. Cough, do they? When was the last time you brushed your teeth, this stinking old tramp? <laughs> ah, next according is a period of randomly bursting into song, followed immediately by delusions of grandeur. Oh, that's not really a problem. I've never sung in my life. Hello, it's sexy it's Patrick Bannow. Oh, oh my God, look at me. I'm like a stallion. I'm gorgeous. Why didn't you tell me? I should take my shirt off. You know what? I'll even let you touch me if you want. Uh, oh, that will be the bout of undeserved self-confidence. <laughs> Love the Bannon. Feel the Bannon. <laughs> oh, man, what's the point? And the ennui. <laughs> now, all that's left now are the hallucinations and unconsciousness. Nano Dotty, was that you? Why are you made out of elbows? You know I don't eat opinions. Ah, ah. Oh, uh, don't worry, folks. Uh, once he wakes up, he'll be just fine. We'll just find a place to stick him where it won't matter how many times he evacuates his bowels. Right, that's all here from Grizzleford, a town that's really making a stink. I'm Barry Lardons. Back to you, Jeremy.
Thanks, Baron. With a noble blockade being set up around our coastline as we speak, when we come back, I'll be talking to three members of the general public who appear to be here purely for medical reasons. Don't go away. Unless, of course, you've got something better to do. We'll be back after these messages. This next section features a potentially controversial guest. And Hans may request some censorship if he goes too off topic. You've done a great job so far keeping everyone happy, so let's keep up the good work. And I can't do this anymore. I say this every Friday. Dude. Oh, hell yeah. Jeremy. Jeremy. My mic is still on. Not on, you're good. Segment grade A. A plus. Oh, dude. I'm about to start a revolution. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about? Cat football? We should be doing an interview with the war minister. Or a book from Johnson <laughs> Downs. Even the weather will be more fucking relevant than this. Jeremy, I just please, noticed that. Free. It's just something like to keep people's minds off things. Exactly. Which is wrong. People's minds should be very much on things. Christ, it's so fucking hot. I know please it's hot. Please as quickly as you can. I can't do this anymore, Jenny. I've had enough. That's it. This is just Ten seconds. Off. Get over yourself, Jeremy. Why don't you stop feeling sorry for yourself for five fucking... Five, four, three... Go. Welcome back to, to the National Nightly News with me, your host, Jeremy Donaldson. Later, we'll be talking to the captain of the territory's first cat football team, <laughs> Professor Pumpkin. But first, I'm joined by three guests with some balmy bodily behaviors. Joining me is a woman who's been hiccuping for over nine months. Isn't that right, Miss <laughs> Piercy? Yes, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Yes. Tell us, what brought all this on? <laughs> it's all a bit of a blur, Jeremy, to be totally frank with you. So I was watching your show, and I remember seeing the news about the election, and it, 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 it hasn't stopped since. Fascinating stuff. Also here is Frankie Steampipe. Um, perhaps you could explain to us exactly what your physiological foil is. I'm here to say it's high time people like me were respected. We're constantly overlooked in the workplace, we're whispered about on buses, and we're asked politely to leave children's birthday parties. And it's disgusting. I, uh... I'm sorry, my bowels have comic timing. And finally, I'm joined by a man who answers every question honestly, even when it isn't aimed at him. How do you cope with that, Mr. Truman? With a combination of booze, self-hatred, and hardcore pornography. Is that right? Not according to my therapist. <laughs> well, in that case, um, let's speak to Rose. Tell me, how does the hiccuping impact you? I get shushed a lot, which is hard. <coughs> hard. At work, they've asked me to, uh, to stop answering the phones. It's really affected my confidence. Well, I find it really fucking irritating. People tend to believe your story? Fuck no. Actually, I've been surprised at how much support I've received. <laughs> <laughs> and Frankie, um, why have you come here today? Because my wife left me, and I was hoping that the fame would win her back. We've started a group of people with ailments deemed broadly comical by society. It's called Take Us Seriously. That's right. And we, we bloody well mean it. <laughs> and who's joined so far? A bunch of fucking losers. It's just us so far. <laughs> and how much success have you had? Well, we've seen some real <laughs> positive changes. I don't want to toot my own horn, but it's been a runaway success. Shit all. Not a single person come to our fun run, and all of our leaflets fell in the canal. Huh. Well, Miss Piercy, um, some people are saying your condition was actually caused by the shocking events of that night. What do you think? Oh, come down, Mr. Donaldson. That's absolute rubbish. <laughs> what would it be like to have a pair of tits? <laughs> Could you? Um, um, I'm sorry. It's very hot. What was I thinking? That you're a team fuck puppet? No. Or a sellout cunt? <laughs> oh, just reminded that he can't help it. And hey, if this isn't live television, then what is it? A fuck fest of propaganda masquerading as journalism. <laughs> <laughs> right, Frankie Rose, tell us. 
How can the viewers get involved with your cause? Yes, we're holding a, a sponsored run in um, Capital <laughs> the Park uh, next weekend. It's called the No Smiles 13 Miles. No, it's called the No Laugh Half. What did I say before the show? That it was the team pulling Jeremy Donaldson's strings. No! <laughs> I, I didn't say, oh, well, I didn't say we that. may have to end that there, unfortunately. What a harmless bit of fun. <laughs> Steady on! <laughs> this is exactly what I'm talking about! We demand respect! <laughs> ah, yes, well, later, I'll be talking to <laughs> Professor Pumpkin. A ginger tabby with a world-class pair of penalty paws. Is that really necessary? No, it isn't! Let go! <laughs> Not you! Unhand him at once! <laughs> enough! That's enough! <laughs> enough! <laughs> what are you doing? I'm trying not to piss myself. Alex, cut! Don't you dare! Don't you fucking dare cut to the ass before I tell you to. Now, you in the broadcast centre, Bozeman's little scapegoat. You listen to me. What? You cut to the ass before I tell you to, and I will kill every single person in this studio. Sure. I am thinking about what I'm doing. I've been thinking about it for a long time. All right, Jeremy, I got Christ your back. So Just tell me when to hit. Here. To hit. Do you remember when we used to do real news before it was all lottery winners and? Bloody cat football. We are on the brink of a siege, the likes of which the world hasn't seen in hundreds of years. This motherfucker is the truth. is at the gates, and I'm stuck here talking to these three fucking idiots. I think my hiccups have stopped. You three, get the fuck out of my studio. Go on, now, go, before I change my mind. I'm tell not. Me. You tell me when Lock to cut the, the ads. Lock. The doors. Yes, Jeremy. Now. Good. Yes. Now. Right then. You in the broadcast center. What? Alex, you listen to me. You pay attention. Now, I'm sure you've already loaded up exactly what you're going to play in the commercial, but today is going to be a little bit different. I already put Look that tape your... in. Yes. Already you did. Look to your right. <laughs> There's a VHS tape. And I want you to load it into one of the machines. And when I say so, I already I did. Not before you play it, you've got about 15 seconds, so I wouldn't waste any time. I got it. It's yeah. in there. Okay. Alex, I assume you won't be playing that tape. This station does not negotiate with terrorists. I hope I made myself clear. You seem to know what to do. Every single thing that comes out of this studio is either one sided or for now, we're going to show the other side for a bit. For a bit of fucking balance. And the good old days. Alex. Play the fucking tape. Yes, sir. Now, I don't want to hurt anything. If I see anything I don't like, I will not hesitate to start. Alex, you're going to get me in trouble with that. I'm sorry. Right People are going to die. I imagine your ratings are going to be through the roof. We've heard them talk about this on the news. We are disrupted. People are going to die, Bozeman. I had to do it. the truth. You know advance a line to you. You know the elderly are not a burden. You know the rich were not all evil. And you know the team membership card is an ID card, no matter what they try to tell you. But why should you trust us? Another faceless organization. <coughs> a shadowy figure with a distorted voice. You've seen this so many times in the movies. Well, this is not a movie. Oh, that's the guy who would make the book. My name is Alan James. I used to try and shock people for a living. For entertainment. But now we live in a time where perhaps you need to be shocked. Perhaps we need to wake up. Advance are coming for our freedoms. They are coming for the fruits of our labors. <laughs> they will take our wealth. They will euthanize our parents and smiling throughout. They will turn our children against us if we voice our concerns. But you don't have to accept it. A great many people already won't. You can resist. And you can disrupt. Find us. Yes. Talk with us. Join us. So what now? It isn't hard. I don't know. We're everywhere. This wasn't what I planned. I mean, some of it was. Three, two, one. But this, this was unexpected. So what now, Jeremy? It was supposed to be your day off. God, please, let's don't do any more stupid things today. I won't. 
how long you already left. Welcome back to the National Nightly News. Joining me unexpectedly, for I very much imagine will be my last broadcast, are two new guests. Jenny works here at the National Nightly News and is someone I consider, well, a friend. And next to her is, what's your name? Andy. Andy's a policeman. Only, we don't call him that anymore. He's a community cohesion official. Officer. Sorry? It's, um, it's community cohesion officer, CCO. And how's that feel, Andy? Being rebranded? It's, uh, it's good. <laughs> it's, it's not about confrontation anymore. You know, the, the force had its fair share of problems. The, uh, the team doesn't have as many. But it still has some. Oh, I couldn't say. Couldn't or wouldn't? I don't know what you want me to say. Christ, you're fucking useless, aren't you? We'll come back to you later. Jenny? I don't want to be on the newsstand. That's perfectly understandable. You'd want to do this. Jenny. Why did you join the National Nightly News Team? I always wanted to work in news. Yes, but why specifically this program? The National Nightly News. It was the news everyone trusted. Was? Was. Is. Do you really want to quibble semantics at gunpoint? Is there something else you'd rather discuss? Well, there is a great big Alan game sized elephant in the room you seem to be ignoring. What do you mean? I saw your face when that hood came down. You didn't know, did you? It's about the message, not the messenger. Like I said, you didn't know. No. I didn't know. The people I met were with... He wasn't there. <laughs> God, I didn't I'm know sorry. it was Alan James. I'm sorry. But seriously. Alan fucking James. You're flushing your life down the toilet for... God, I love you, Jeremy, but... He's a good speaker. He's popular in the country. That right. Look, forget Alan James. There is still something deeply wrong. And you know it, Jenny. And you know it, Andy. And you, you at home, you know it too. Oh, look at these readings. I'm interviewing a guest who stinks of shit. Patrick is paddling about in shit. And Robin, Robin is literally interviewing someone who collects the fucking stuff. I mean, it's not sophisticated, but what a metaphor. We are sleepwalking our way into oppression. Nope. Nope. Oh, I w you're telling me yeah. I wasn't supposed to you're censor all of this. Censoring. Are you telling me none of this was this was supposed to be? What are all those scientists working on at Grentham Downs? What are they <laughs> testing underground at Altergrave? Andy, your turn. Make yourself fucking useful. How many people have you brought in for consultations just because they weren't carrying or didn't have team membership cards? Oh, well, there's other forms of identification that we will accept. For how long? We're just here to help. Then why do you need these? It's not really help when it's offered at gunpoint, is it, Andy? Let me demonstrate it for you. Let me help you. You eat these cards with my notes on it, and you'll probably digest a fact. That'd be helpful, wouldn't it, Andy? Knowing a fact? Oh, I don't understand. Do you want my help, yes, Andy? Yes, yes, whatever you say, yes. Security are here, Jeremy. Eat it. What? Eat the fucking news, Andy, or I'll force it down your fucking throat. Jeremy, stop. Go on. Really? Eat it. Eat it, you fucking bully. Jeremy, stop. They will kill you. Please. Don't make me watch that. Of course. You're right. Sorry. Sorry, everyone. You can put the card down now, Andy. He's gonna blow his own brains out. You can go now. You too, Jenny. Fuck off over there. And then he's all cameras on me. 
You're alive. You're alive. This new regime of ours is so seductive. I understand that. But before we all hand off our freedoms, should we ask <laughs> whom we're handing them over? Don't you want to know what's being done in your name? How many people were transitioned last month? A record high. Again, if you care. Shouldn't someone ask advance how they plan to deal with this blockade? How many years or months of supplies we have? Why aren't we asking these questions instead of whose shit is this? There's a cat backstage dressed as a fucking goalie for Christ's sake. He's even got the little gloves. Anyway, that's why I arranged for you to see that broadcast from the last break. I didn't know it was going to be him, but I guess that just about sums it up. We are all up Ship Creek with a paddle made of Alan fucking James. Christ, it's also fucking pointless. I was gonna quit tonight. Take a holiday, try something else, out of the limelight. Maybe try having a relationship. I hear they're nice. Never tried them. I. Don't do it. I love. Him. He's back. He's backed into a corner. Don't do it. And now, well. God don't, damn, don't, don't do it. Don't do I've it. I've my best to be honest with don't you. Don't do it. This just isn't the news anymore. I don't see oh, yes. it. I've lost the Alex. spider. Alex, think of the What's consequences. The ads? I'll let you down. Please, we can't check. Oh, cut to the ads. My name is Jane now. Donaldson. Now, do it now. If you can. Somehow. And I envy you. I have a piece of your mind. I need people to see this. Jeremy! Ads. Breathtaking sound. These graphics are amazing, Brad. That actually looks a bit like a real tank. Oh, gee, Janet. What a time to be alive. I named the stream all downhill from here, and oh boy. Oh boy. Did it go way downhill. Thank you for joining me on this one. I'll catch you guys on the next one. You all have a lovely night.